Good afternoon and thank you very much Jade for that wonderful introduction. Um, as Jade was saying, my name is Helen Mason and I'm an occupational therapist. Um, I work alongside the NHS and sometimes in the NHS um, and I'm currently setting up a new service um, out of a shed in Powdrum Castle, which I'll talk about a bit at the end. Um, thank you for inviting me to talk to you today at uh, today's power hour, uh, lunchtime hour. Um, I'm going to very briefly touch on what mindfulness is, as I'm aware most people will know. Um, and then I'm going to talk you through a very simple uh, mindful exercise using chocolate. So you will need uh, a wrapped chocolate for this um, presentation. So if you need a break to go to the loo or to get yourself something to eat, then please do feel free to pause the recording and um, get yourself ready and nice and comfortable. Okay. So what is mindfulness? Uh, Professor Mark Williams, who's the former director of the Oxford Mindfulness Centre, says that mindfulness means knowing directly what is going on inside and outside yourself moment by moment, which I think is a beautiful way of, of putting it. This is actually from the NHS website um, and is uh, freely available for the public who uh, may not know what mindfulness is. Um, I think what's really lovely about the way uh, Mark talks is um, his way of expressing that it's an, mindfulness is, in, in, is important for reconnecting with our bodies and sensation and to be really present in the present moment. Um, another important part of mindfulness is an awareness of our thoughts and feelings as they happen from moment to moment. So I won't talk you through all of this slide. It's something you can pause on and have a read of if you would like. Um, however, I am aware that most of us will know what mindfulness is. Um, I love this quote um, one of my colleagues gave me the other day about don't talk about floods with Noah in the room. And I'm sure most of you, um, because of our background in health, will already be very familiar with mindfulness-based uh, interventions and mindfulness itself, the, the concept of mindfulness. Um, however, I've just put some interventions here um, which are recommended um, by NICE guidelines for certain conditions, for example, with depression, in which mindfulness is, is recommended as, as part of treatment. So Dunn et al. in 2022 uh, looked at the effect of mindfulness-based interventions on immunity-related biomarkers. Um, and they approached this by doing a comprehensive meta-analysis of randomised controlled trials, which they have uh, published this year in Clinical Psychology Review. It's a really good paper. I would uh, really um, encourage people to have a read. Um, during uh, this piece of work, they uh, looked at uh, past and current research um, and identified uh, that uh, mindfulness-based interventions are, have been found to be useful in supporting with people with anxiety, uh, depression, stress, addiction, pain, and for people struggling with, street, uh, with uh, sleep and relapse. Um, they've also looked at um, how MBIs can be helpful with supporting those experiencing alterations to memory, attention, meta-awareness, decentering, ruminating, and uh, difficulties with emo emotional regulation. So there are lots of health benefits have been found to be uh, connected with using uh, mindfulness and MBIs in practice. So this is a photo that I took a couple of weeks ago um, from Dawlish Warren Beach in Devon. Um, I, looking after my own well-being, I started sea swimming um, about two months ago. <laughs> never, never thought about going in the water at this time of year normally, um, but I thought I would share this with you as we come through our um, and do our mindfulness practice together today. Um, 
As I explained at the beginning of this presentation, I'm an occupational therapist by background, and I have a particular interest in uh, not just interventions that work, but how interventions work for an individual, so person-centred work, and uh, how we can support people to find the right things for them that is going to support their health and well-being. So I'm very open in talking about my own experience of burnout. Um, and for me, it was a slow recovery um, and upholstery started me off, <laughs> uh, learning to upholster um, and bringing that structure into my day. Um, and most recently, sea swimming has been something that's been really helpful. The reason why I've chosen to do chocolate mindfulness today is because um, quite often when I have done mindfulness in my clinical practice with teenagers, um, that starting with the breath can sometimes for some people be distracting or for lots of different reasons um, too difficult to try so it puts a barrier up uh, maybe because they feel uncomfortable um, it might be actually for some of the young people I work with it's because um, they have PTSD symptoms so actually stopping can um, be really hard because intrusive thoughts come in and it can be too distressing so when talking about mindfulness a really fun way of um, introducing the subject is to to look at doing something a little bit silly which is like looking at, at um and wrapping a chocolate bar and um mindfully focusing for the, a few moments on that as a way of uh, experiencing um focusing on something in, intensely um to help um to help yeah relax and to, to connect back in with the self and the environment so today we are going to do a mindfulness exercise around eating chocolate. Um, I'm just going to let you get yourselves ready um, to have a few nice deep breaths. You might want to go to the loo or go and get yourself some water um, ready for this exercise. I'll just let you have a few moments to do that. Okay, so try to keep quiet during the exercise and focus all of your attention on the chocolate. Approach the exercise with an open mind and gentle curiosity. Pick up your wrapped chocolate, but don't unwrap it yet. Place it in the palm of your hand and notice the colours and shapes on the package. Feel the weight of it on your hand. Pretend like you have never seen a wrapped chocolate bar before and examine it closely. Touch the packaging with your fingers and feel the texture. Pay attention to any sound the wrapper makes. Examine the wrapper, noticing all of the colours. Look at the different sides of the chocolate wrapper and notice any place that the light reflects off the package. Any shadows? If your mind starts to wonder and think about other things, that's okay. Notice the thoughts and bring your attention back to the chocolate. Now begin to slowly open the wrapper. Listen for the sounds of the wrapper tearing. Notice the movement of your hand, fingers and arm muscles as you open the chocolate. You may hear other people or noises in the room. Notice the sounds and bring your attention back to the chocolate. Raise the chocolate to your nose and smell the chocolate. Slowly breathe in several times and focus on the different smells. Does smelling the chocolate trigger anything else in your body? Is your mouth watering? Are you having any thoughts? Hurry up and let me eat the chocolate. <laughs> What's taking so long? If so, notice them 
and bring your attention back to smelling the chocolate. Now slowly take a small bite of chocolate, but do not chew it or swallow it. Notice the feeling and taste of the chocolate in your mouth. How does it feel as it melts? Notice the taste and sensations of the chocolate on your tongue. Move the chocolate around your mouth. Try to notice where you feel like you want, when you feel like you want to swallow. Slowly swallow the chocolate, focusing on the sensations. Notice any lingering tastes or sensations. So now this practice is coming to a close, have a think about how this was different from the way that you normally eat chocolate. What did you notice during the exercise? And do you have any thoughts about how these principles might help you to eat in other areas of your life? So just take a couple of minutes to relax and think about the rest of the day and moving on from this session. I hope you found this a fun exercise to do. I certainly find it a useful one for introducing the theme of mindfulness. It's also a nice one to do at the end of team meetings or just any time in the day, really, when um, you need to ground and uh, reconnect with yourself. Um, I sometimes use tangerine because I like the smell or uh, hand cream. Something that I think is uh, well known is how important it is to, when thinking about self-care, is how bespoke it is really. And uh, we've been really lucky in our power hours to hear some wonderful speakers from across the NHS and social care talking about their work. Um, and I just wanted to, um, again, raise awareness of the wellbeing, regional wellbeing hubs that have been set up. Um, they have workers who you can phone up and speak to who will help you to navigate the resources that are available in your local area, which I think is a really lovely um, connection to have because there is quite a lot of information out there about self-care and well-being and um, it's useful to have someone to connect and have uh, bounce ideas off. Um, as an occupational therapist, we talk about doing, being and becoming. Um, some, you know, people can sometimes be very good at doing and um, expecting to become, but actually the being bit gets a bit forgotten. Um, and so, you know, with anything like meditation or mindfulness, um, practice is a really important part of the process and, and moving through things. Um, when people are off sick, sometimes that can be quite isolating, though, doing that alone. And um, so I've set up a um, hashtag um, called Gorilla Self Care to encourage um, people to post uh, little things that they've done in the day that has supported, you know, they've found supportive to their well-being, just to inspire each other. Um, and also, sometimes it is really difficult. Um, Self-care, you know, as professionals in health, uh, we are very good at looking after other people, but sometimes um, it can be hard to apply some of those practices to ourselves, especially when we are very overrun and, and stressed. So um, guerrilla self-care is a way of, you know, reclaiming it and uh, for people to find uh, ways um, and share ways that, you know, that they have found useful um, rather than being introduced to a lot of information that they've already had or have had in their training. So for me personally, um, the things that I found really good for my well-being have, has been uh, meditating at night, uh, sea swimming, which is the most recent thing. Um, I found opera singing, which I came across randomly, uh, really helped me with my voice um, when I was very stressed um, and upholstery. So it can be anything really. And um, I think uh, being an OT, when I experienced burnout, the, the, the best thing I ever did for myself was to actually apply occupational therapy to myself and to go 
on that journey really about finding the things that felt right for me in my body and for my well-being and for my own work-life balance. I don't think you can be told to do that. I think that's something that we can discover for ourselves, but also to support each other in discovering. Um, and so I really thank uh, the Institute for um, inviting me to speak today. Um, I hope that um, it has been an interesting session and um, I'm really um, pleased and welcome connecting with others, um, finding out about what's going on out um, in, in the community. Um, and I thank you so much for your time.